When accounting for deferred tax, it's important that you understand the whole purpose of accounting for deferred tax is the matching concept. So let me give you an example of where we are revaluing um, an asset. Let's say some land, let's say some PPE with a carrying value of 100 and we are revaluing it by 20 to 120. Now, in such circumstances, no current tax is assessed. In other words, just because there is a paper gain by the company, the taxman will not require a current payment. So if we don't account for deferred tax, we're recognising a gain of 20 in the financial statements, but not its tax effects. And when you think of earnings, when you think of reporting profits, we always think of them post-tax. And there is a tax implication to making a profit. And if the tax rate was, say, 30%, we should be looking to recognise an additional tax expense of 6 to match with the 20. Now, I've approached this explanation of accounting for deferred tax without yet referring to temporary differences. So deferred tax is provided for in full on all of your year-end temporary differences. And temporary differences between what? Between the carrying value of your asset, which is now 120, and the tax base of your asset, which hasn't changed. Yeah, the land was bought for 100. There's no current tax being assessed on its revaluation. So for taxation purposes, we are leaving the uh, tax base of the asset to be 100. So we have recorded an accounting gain, which has created a taxable temporary difference. And therefore, there should be a deferred tax liability arising. Given that we've got a carrying value of 120, given that we've got a tax base of 100, that temporary difference is 20. And therefore, with a tax rate of 30%, we're creating a deferred tax liability of six. So I've now mentioned six twice. Once as an expense, that's the debit to match with the gain of 20. So we are reporting a post-tax gain of 14. And once as a credit, in other words, we're establishing a deferred tax liability of six, which would be a non-current liability and would not be discounted. So let me recap. When we have a taxable temporary difference, it's come about because of an accounting gain and therefore you set up a deferred tax liability. And in that way, the profits you are reporting are reported post-tax. So the tax implications of events and transactions are being reported in the accounting period in which they arise, not when you pay the tax. Because you're not gonna pay tax on that gain for years to come, presumably. Only when you come to sell the asset Will you, then, will you then actually have to pay the tax? But in the meantime, because of the matching concept, because of the requirements of ISA 12, we do recognise a deferred tax liability on a revaluation. Now, my final point is again matching. Where have we taken the gain? If the gain is on PPE, if the gain is on land, if it's not a reversal of a loss that we've previously charged in the P&L, then that gain of 20 is being recognised in equity. That gain of 20 is being recognised in other comprehensive income. And therefore, that's where the tax expense should go as well. So that you are reporting your net uh, gain of 14, you're reporting your net gain in equity. If, on the other hand, for whatever reason, that gain had been reported in the profit and loss account, where most profits and losses are arguably reported, then the tax on that gain would also go in the profit and loss account. Matching, matching, matching.